for today. Vamos a empezar, vamos a empezar con, con YouTube. Uh, we're going to hope that YouTube doesn't do any funny little uh, brain farts on me today, which they did last night. So, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they took a long time to process things. So we're going to hope that everything happens on time. You never know because millions of people using this stuff, you know. Right. They put me in the queue with everybody else. That's the way it is. Okay. Espero que ustedes estén bien. I hope you are all well today. We are going to devote the vast majority of our time today to uh, subjunctivo, subjunctive. Uh, we're going to be focusing on one aspect of it, but of course, taking any other questions, and I expect you to have questions because that is very, very normal. Um, and what I'm going to start with is, es normal que ustedes tengan preguntas. Es normal que ustedes tengan preguntas. It is very normal for you to have questions. So if you do, as we go through the practice for that, do not hold back because... This is something that typically takes people a very long time, super long time to get comfortable with. So, uh, you know, I, unless, unless your first language was something like French or Italian or, you know, something else where you're, you're seeing this sort of thing, it does feel weird. So uh, don't think it's odd or think that you're bad. It's a no, this is the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is the way it is for everybody. Okay. Um, Marilyn. Marilyn. Yeah, it's easy. Um, I think that that video with Paula was really good. And the one thing I heard her keep saying was if the person speaking has doubt about it, that's all that matters. And yeah, it's a whole different way for us to think. We it's a think different way to think. And that is why I sent you that particular video. There are schools of thought where they say, give people no rules whatsoever. But then you start here, this being used and you're like, well, why? I don't understand when I'm supposed to, when I'm not. Yeah. So there is a school of thought saying, don't explain it. Just give lots of examples and, and oh, you'll just get it. But generally, a lot of people like feel very uh, like set off in the stream with no or to yeah. with, with that. <laughs> so this other thing, you notice she had the totally opposite. Uh, Paula in her video had the total opposite um, attitude of I have to tell this to you in English because if I say this in Spanish, you won't know what the heck I'm talking about mm -hmm. or why we're doing this. But Hers was the very analytical take, and it was the it was a big picture thing. So what I am going to say as sort of a, a caveat, even though I really like her video, is there is uh, it is possible to overthink mm -hmm. to overthink the so subjunctive thing, to overthink the concept of of uh, perspective, it is possible to overthink the idea of is it true or not true. And uh, it's possible to get into the weeds in a hurry with that. So I like to lead off with examples that are easy to understand first, because there are many, many examples and many, many reasons for using subjunctive. And they are used on a daily basis um, pretty much all the time. But we're going to start out. Vamos a empezar. Vamos a empezar con algo que no tiene nada que ver con el subjuntivo. We're going to start with something that has nothing to do with subjunctive. And I think I've got the, oh, no, I don't have the sharing because I'm doing the sharing. I'm going to share some pictures. Karen has a little blip for you because she thought this was interesting because it ties in with this idea of muralismo. You saw in the Destinos thing, they did a whole big spiel on muralismo. Muralism, muralism as a movement. This is a very big, big deal for Mexicans in, in the thing of learning culture. Uh, the muralist movement, which happened 
very tail end of the of the uh, 1800s into the early part of the 1900s is a huge point of national pride for them because it was a movement that was very, very strong in Mexico and they have many good, talented people. They named the three, the big three in Mexican culture, which are Siqueiros, Orozco, and Rivera. Most people recognize that name, Diego de Rivera. They might recognize it because they're more familiar with Frida Kahlo, who was married to, uh, well, married and not, and then married again. Uh, that, but that's another story. Yeah, Frida Kahlo and her husband, uh, Diego Rivera. And, and, and during her lifetime, there were times when it was kind of almost a competitive thing, you know. Um, she would get some more attention, but he was kind of the big guns, and really, she's gotten more of the spotlight. But um, uh, Diego Rivera is the one that we generally know of with this mural movement because he was actually hired to do several pieces that wound up being in the United States, in addition to the many, many examples in his homeland. But these are, are not. Uh, Mexican muralists, but they are still within that muralist movement. So I'm going to put the share screen on so you can see the pictures. And Karen's got a little something she wanted to share with everybody. And this is from something called Journey to Balance. And it kind of shows, I guess, and correct me if I'm wrong, Karen, how this muralist movement kind of starts to bleed over into Native American artwork as well and the traditions right. that they have have within their community because of course these are cultures that were contiguous to each other in, in a certain way right and maybe not right next to each other but pretty close uh so Karen do you want me to show these one by one um sure but okay that is kind of like one that's in the middle the first one is the one with the people on it uh, no, that's the last one. Uh, okay. No. There. Okay. okay, that's the first one. Okay. Okay. This is the big overview, I take it. Yes, yeah, the big is, overview just, picture. Okay. Okay, well, th this is the first, the first panel. There's six panels, I think. Um, anyway, uh, in El Museo del, uh, de Arizona del Norte, hay una exposición Se llama Journey to Balance, Migration and Healing in Three Hopi Murals. Mi mural favorito is this one. Uh, yes. Tiene el titulo Journey of the Human Spirit. Es cinco pies de altura. Altura. Y, y cuarenta ocho pies de ancho. Cuarenta y ocho. Pies. Pies. <laughs> pies. 48 pies de ancho. Why? Boom. Why? Muy largo. OK, continúa. OK. Um, los artistas fueron inspirados por murales antiguos, el arte cubanismo de Europa, Y los murales mexicanos de la revolución. Una combinación. Cubismo, cubismo como cubismo de Picasso. Mm. Sí, sí. El, el perro. Um, veo el perro. Ah, o oh, el perro es, aquí. Es uh, Picasso esque. <laughs> ah, <laughs> sí. Así. Ok. Um, ok. Los murales muestran. La llegada de la gente de debajo de la tierra. So they're coming out. Uh, su migración. And that shows Chaco Canyon up here on the right. Um, su migración a varios lugares. Unos problemas de la vida y cómo ellos buscan el equilibrio. Okay. So. Vale, sí. And these are some very neat. Yeah, that's the next of, one. Of, yeah. What these yeah. look like. And these are all up in Flagstaff in our state. Well, we propio at the wrong one. It's just going in progression. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't have these in the, it, it would not save it in the exact order. Oh, well, you know, it didn't. Okay. But, that's but okay. you had the right one a minute ago. Yeah. It's the one with the people falling all over. This one, one here. Okay. Ah, oh, ah, ah. See. Okay. Una uh, batalla, una batalla, no? See. See. Una batalla See. de culturas. And of course, all the indigenous people have these battles with cultures. And part of Rivera's uh, and Orozco and Siqueiros, part of their idea with this uh, movement of muralismo was to tell the story of uh, the culture of people, but not from a Eurocentric point of view from the point of view of the indigenous people. There was a quite a, an enormous groundswell uh, at the time that uh, Rivera was creating his artwork, where really it was a, a, a rebellion against Eurocentric values. You know, people talk about culture wars now, but they were really getting away from the idea of Spanish culture. It was like, these guys are the invaders. What are you talking about? They brought disease to our people. Millions of people died. What was nice about this? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they were very, very into telling the story of the brutality of one people conquering another people coming in as conquerors. And, um, um, you know, Mexican and Latin American culture in general, uh, it really started with this groundswell of this artistic movement to sort of stand up and say, hey, look, we are the sum of our parts. We are not just Spanish speakers. We are the descendants of many indigenous peoples. And we should be proud of our indigenous heritage. And we should call out what really happened. This wasn't, uh, we're coming to America. We'll all be nice with you people who live here. It was not like that. It was just, it was not so you know all the conflict um oh that but, looks like a priest being murdered uh, see, well, <laughs> see? <laughs> there was a lot of bad feeling about uh uh you know yeah uh, the lot well, of bad I, I, feeling about the imposition of one culture upon another right okay so i have a paragraph uh, here you had you had some priests who literally chronicled the atrocities that were uh, happening with Spanish conquistadores subjugating and enslaving native peoples. You had other uh, uh, church uh, officials who said, well, this is the conquering side and we're bringing them to God. And well, if they won't, well, I guess we gotta do what we gotta do. So, you know, you had people, even with the religious side, who were on both sides. Some people who said, no, these are atrocities that are, that are being committed. And other people saying, well, you know, these are, are kind of like not real human people. Yeah, we're, we heard that before, sadly. But, you know, mm -hmm. which goes to show you that people are people. Uh, <laughs> you know, these, these things happen with, with culture wars. And this was an actual you know, war between cultures, a clash of cultures. Uh, but there, um, uh, anyway, that celebration of all the good, bad, and everything in between with uh, the culture developing as it did was the, you know, the theme of um, the folks in these art movements. So, okay. Gracias. Yeah. Gracias. Cool. I am going to, in the email, send you a link to um, a long, so we can't play it during class. A long, if you're interested in it and you want to see more about it, it is a long video, that 24 minute video, I think, that talks about the exhibit. And um, yeah. Yeah. You know, one thing that was, in was interesting that one um, segment where they were having the battle, this was the Pueblo Revolt where the various Indian Pueblos in Northern Arizona and New Mexico all got together and attacked the missions all at the same time. And they actually threw the Spanish out. And they are the only ones who ever managed to throw out mm -hmm. any Europeans out of North America. Yeah. So they got uh, rid of them. And at least on the Hopi Mesas, you know, nobody bothered them for 200 years. 
But then when they came back, it was bad because yeah. it was, we're taking all your children away and we're sending them to boarding school and we're digging yeah. up your area for coal mines and we're using up your water and we're doing all this stuff because we want to make electricity. Yeah. And so this whole story is, is in that mural, but it's, I mean, there's a whole lot of stuff in there. You know, this, it happened with the, the, the Spaniards in the New World. It happened with, uh, it's, they've been uncovering a lot of this with Canada now, with finding graves of in, oh, in yes. the schools that were, uh, you know, indigenous children who were taken away. You know, there's just, uh, wow, world's a sad place. But, you know, I, it, but it is healthier to know that these problems occur to, of course, move our society forward. So anyway, uh, there you go. If you have more interest, you can check out the video later on about that movement and that exhibit. Um, y vamos a ver, let's see, we're going to do... We're gonna do. Hmm, we're gonna do some uh, very, very quick uh, things. That here we go. The last episode from the prior week. I was like, hmm, was there subjunctive in there? There was when they were. I think there were about five or six examples, but I'm gonna point out a few. When the various people were going in to make the appointments for the or reservations for these weekend trips, there was a comment about quiero un plan que incluya los mejores hoteles. I want a plan that includes the best hotels. Quiero un plan que incluya. I want a plan that might include. And he is implying that he doesn't know if there is a package deal there or not. I mm. want a plan that might include. He did not say incluye. He said incluya. I want a plan that might include. Mm. That means he's looking for something, but he doesn't know if it's out there. So from his point of view, he is seeking, but it may not exist. So because he doesn't know if there's a package that's right for him, he uses that word incluya. Incluya, a subjunctive. Um, when they did the little flashback to uh, Raquel and Arturo wishing on the stars, uh, yeah. she had a little thing, les pido a las primeras estrellas que podamos que encontrar. I wish on the first stars that we might Fine. And she said, I am asking the stars to do this, like kind of asking the heavens. Okay. And that verb pido, les pido, I ask of them, the higher powers that be uh, in the heavens, les pido que podamos encontrar. I ask that we may find, we may be able to find, podamos encontrar, that we might be able to find the family. Uh, and then he wishes back, esta mujer que sea parte importante de, de la vida. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this person who may be an important part of my life. So they're kind of working this in in kind of a sneaky way here. Uh, uh, when Raquel goes in herself to make a reservation, she brings up a past subjunctive, but it's that polite quisiera form, which is a subjunctive. It is a past, not a present subjunctive. And quisiera informarme, I would like to, you know, get filled in on what plans are out there for vacation reservations, okay? Um, the guy says back to her, quizás te convenga, maybe it's convenient for you, maybe it suits you, and te convenga, maybe it is suitable for you, that was a subjunctive. Uh, she came back with a quisiera saber, I would like to know, when that there, that quisiera is again that polite asking. And here was the great big fat example of an uh, um, impersonal expression right at the tail end of the episode. Es mejor que no hagas nada. It's best that you don't do anything, uh, that you take no action. Es mejor que no hagas nada. Es mejor que, it is better that. 
uh, we're going to focus on the eye of weirdo. <laughs> so we're, foc we're focusing on different reasons, or as they like to call them, triggers that require subjunctive. And we're going to be looking at examples of those. Um, Paula did tell you, by the way, that really you've got to have like all these factors together. You have to have a trigger, meaning a reason for the subjunctive. You need to have that word que that connects the two different people and the two different actions, right? Um, the very first verb about the first person has to be a trigger, a reason that is going to bring up doubt, some state of the action, not the next following action, not quite being real. Uh, and the verb after que is going to introduce a new person and subjunctive, the action that is not yet really part of reality. So the point you should take home from Paula's video about the subjunctive is that subjunctive deals with actions that are not yet part of what is really truly happening it deals with things that we might wish to be happening. Uh, it, it depends on this point of view of the person in the first clause, okay? Uh, it deals, subjunctive deals with things that um, are not real or are contrary to fact. Everything indicative is part of the factual world. Things that really are happening, things that really will, because it's in the plans, things that really did happen, okay? And they are indicative because they talk about actual facts, whereas subjunctive deals with desires, wants, but things that aren't happening. They might happen 10 seconds from now. They might happen a year from now. They might never happen. They might not even exist. Okay. So they're in la la land of, of they're, they're in twilight zone. Um, so that's kind of scary when you think about, am I going to be able to use that? But you will. Now she did mention that you generally have to have these two people that you can't use it by itself, but you will see uh, that in reality, sometimes people do lead off with a K and a subjunctive right away. Sometimes they do. And that means because that first half is just implied but not stated. So that whole thing of somebody just shouting out to you as you leave a store, que tengas buen día, may you have a good day, is just que tengas Buen dia, that you may have a good day. And what they're leaving off is the espero que tengas buen dia. They're leaving off, es importante que tengas buen dia. They're leaving off, quiero que tengas buen dia. So sometimes you do see just the subjunctive used kind of by its lonesome, but then generally it's leading out with that word que and it's shouted out as a wish. Okay, okay, vale. Um, a ver. Oh, I need to switch my screens here. I'm gonna do this real, muy rápidamente. Espero que lo hago muy rápidamente. Okay, espero que haga todo en el orden. I hope I get everything in the right order here. Vale, magnifico. We're going to take a quick look at uh, the latest episode. And while Angela was on the phone with her cheating heart boyfriend, El Novio Jorge, uh, while she was on the screen with him, uh, she heard that wonderful female voice on the screen and her brother absolutely knows yeah. what's going on. 
Uh, he very wisely says nothing. Good for her brother. Perdone. Um, Creo que me he equivocado de número. And notice, oh, from her point of view, she's correct. I think I got the wrong number. No subjunctive. Creo que, I think that. So if I think this is real, everything is gonna be indicative. No subjunctive. Quería hablar con Jorge. Un momento, por favor. ¿Cómo? Que espero un momento. Que espero un momento. That you wait a minute. <laughs> quiero que, it's just left off, but you know, quiero que espere, I want you to wait. So here's a kind of an example where we really only have the subjunctive half of it because she's shortening this communication a little bit, okay? Que espere un momento. So we've got that right off at the front. Um, y próximo, próximo. Ah, entonces tenemos la hija, uh, la hija de Carlos, ¿verdad? Están hablando de los deportes. Oh, mi preferido, my preferred, but we would say my favorite. Preferido is just another way that they have in Spanish of saying my fave. So when you hear mi prefer preferido, think mi favorito. Es igual. It's the same. Pero ustedes también hacen ejercicio, ¿no? You guys Corre, exercise, right? Nadan. Like you run, you pues swim. Sí, pero no me gusta correr y nadar es aburrido. ¿Sabes? Cuando regresemos. <gasps> Cuando regresemos. Uh oh, here it comes. And this is not coming with one of the weirdo things. Cuando regresemos a Miami, when we go back, when we return to Miami, why is that? Wait a minute, that's not in weirdo. You're right, it's not. Cuando regresemos a Miami, where are they right now? Mexico, están? Mexico City. Están en México. Están en México. No es realidad estar en, en, estar en Miami. La acción de estar en Miami no es parte de la realidad de la familia en ese punto. That point. So... Sometimes, but not always, you will hear subjunctive after cuando. So now you may really panic, but don't. <laughs> because when we get back to Miami, are they in Miami? No. That's no. why she uses subjunctive. When we get back, because she thinks it'll happen, but it isn't where they are right now. So sometimes, cuando, when it talks about the future, cuando will call for a subjunctive. I would think that she might want to put it in the indicative to really make her father think that they're really going to have to go. But they're all in Mexico. Everybody knows this is a fact, they're in Mexico. So with this cuando, because they're talking about something that will happen, they, oh, they think, but they don't really know. It's, it's a maybe at this stage. With this, when, they will always use subjunctive. When we use the word when, and we talk about a habit, then we don't use subjunctive because a habit is something that happens all the time. Un ejemplo, okay? Su ejemplo en, en el episodio es cuando regresemos a, a Miami, uh, voy, voy a, uh, o quiero, quiero tomar clases de tenis, okay? She talks about what she wants to do when they get back, which isn't now. But you may say, cuando, cuando viajamos, 
tomamos dos maletas siempre. When we travel, we always take two suitcases. Cuando viajamos, tenemos o, o llevamos siempre dos maletas. If I'm talking about a habitual thing, every time I do this, this is what I do, then we don't need subjunctive. It's this whole thing of it's counter to reality. They're in Miami now. So she has to use subjunctive with cuando. I am not going to ask you to practice that yet today because that is a hard thing to recognize, but it's not that hard when you think about the context. But for you to think about the context and have it come out of your mouth will be weird, but to recognize it when you're listening and understanding the context of the story won't be as hard. He comes back with another subjunctive ¿Sabes? pretty bueno, soon. Miami, quiero tomar lecciones de tenis. ¿Tenis? Sí, quiero hacerme famosa y rica jugando tenis. Yo creo que sería mejor que estudiaras más. Oh, oh, and they didn't print it out. Darn. They didn't print it out, or at least they're not doing it on this one. He says, Carlos nos, nos dice, lo, me, lo mejor es que estudies más. Lo mejor es que. Lo mejor es que. The best thing is that. Lo mejor es que estudies más. The best thing is that you study more. He is saying, hey, hey, enough with the tennis lessons yet. Hold on, honey. <laughs> Better that you study more. Let, let's not, not get the cart before the horse. Eh, lo mejor es que. The best thing is that you study more. So again, it's a subjective thing. He doesn't know if she's going to study more. He doesn't know if she's going to get off his back about this. Uh, but, you know, así es. Y hay... Muchos ejemplos. We got lots of examples in here of uh, just other deportes. They tell us lots of names for sports. We don't need to go through that. Ah, uh, ooh, nostalgia. Oh, we go through down memory lane. Uh, Raul is getting kind of uh, teary eyed over the whole the prospect of selling the family estate. Uh, and the real estate agent, la gente de. Uh, bienes raíces, bienes raíces son real estate. She comes up with a subjunctive very quickly. Mire, lo llamaba porque he hablado con mi cliente en los Estados Unidos. Sí. Pues me ha pedido. Uh oh, here's a big clue. Me pedi pedido, they have asked me to do something. And pedir, asking somebody else to do something is going to trigger a subjunctive later. Me, uh, me han pedido, me han pedido, they have asked me to. Pido que les comunique. Que les comunique. They have asked me to. Que les com comunique. They have asked me to communicate to you guys. Que está dispuesto a mejorar la oferta. So, which word is subjunctive? It's not. Communicate, Comun is it? Si, 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 is si. It? Comunicar. Oh. Comunicar is to communicate. Oh. Uh, uh, I, I think it is one person. Yeah, because she's got a singular letter. Uh, me ha pedido que, uh, has asked me to, que les comunique, comunique, uh, comunique, que les comunique. They have asked me to communicate to you that they're uh, ready to up the offer. Mejorar la oferta is to improve the offer. So up the ante. Bien. So we've got yet yeah, another subjunctive, but that was, you know, kind of under the radar. We're going to have another cuando come in here in just a moment. Pues lo platicaré con el resto de la familia. I will chat with the rest of the family about that. I'll bring it up. We probably, oh yeah, I'll bring it up with the family. Platicaré to chat. Okay. Bien. Usted tiene mi teléfono. Ah, you got my phone number. Here it comes. Puede llamarme cuando tomen una decisión. 
You can call me when you make a decision. In Spanish, you don't make a ser, a decision. You take a decision, tomar. Puedes llamarme cuando tomen una decisión. You can call me when you make a decision. Have they made a decision yet? She's just laid more money on the table. That's all we know. But we don't have a decision yet. So Cuando is talking about the future and she does not know which way the family's gonna decide. So, cuando tomen una decisión. Vale, sí. Um, so, that's going on. Um, I want you to also notice some situations when we don't use subjunctive. Coming up right here. Raquel, te esperamos. Te esperábamos para conocer la ciudad. Wait a minute, esperar, isn't that a wish for? Well, it is, but we're not using subjunctive here. We don't have the word K. And we don't really have two people. Te esperábamos, we were waiting for you to tour around the city. Uh, so we're waiting and he's expecting that she's also going to come with them on the tour. Te esperábamos para conocer la ciudad to get to know the city. There's no need to use subjunctive there. We're not splitting it off into two different camps of people. Okay, so just having a hope or a want verb is not enough. It's got to have the K introducing a different person. We don't have that in this situation. And she comes back also with a subjunctive really soon. Ah, creo que es mejor. Creo que es mejor. Es mejor. It's an impersonal expression. Es mejor, it's better. Es mejor que los deje solos. It's better that I leave you guys on your own, alone. It's better that I leave you guys alone. That I let you go off on your own. Es mejor que los deje. And the yo here is just implied. It would be understood. Even though she doesn't say the word yo. So she's saying, it's better that I let you guys do that. Es mejor is an impersonal expression when I have que and a different human being, then I need subjunctive for that. Okay. A ver. A ver. And uh, what is dije? What is dije? What's the... Deje. What deje. is the... Deje. What is deje. The, sí. Deje, is, <coughs> deje has many translations. Deje comes from dejar, an AR verb. Dejar can mean to leave something behind. It can mean to allow. In this case, it means to let you guys go on your own. Oh. Que los deje solos, that I leave you guys by yourselves. Bien? Okay. Sí. A ver, okay. Gracias, gracias. And then, uh, and then they come back with something. It sounds like it's subjunctive, but it's a command. Ustedes necesitan conocerse. ¿Por qué no van sin mí? Raquel, ya tú eres parte de la familia. Gracias, Ángela. Pero ¿no crees que deben estar más tiempo juntos? Pero Raquel... Bueno, está bien. Pero te llamamos después para comer juntos. ¿De acuerdo? De acuerdo. Diviértanse. Gracias. Ah, diviértanse. You don't need to do the subtitle. Diviértanse. Have a good time. So that's really a command, but it sounds like commands and subjunctive are formed the same way. So, yeah. Uh, we get later on, very, very early on, our buddy Luis. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know whether I feel sorry for this guy or not. Uh, I still have never decided about that. But, um, you donde está? Es cierto, pero ahora estoy trabajando. Entonces, ¿qué te parece si comemos juntos? 
Pues, no sé si voy a tener tiempo. Una promesa es una promesa. Oh, and you know what? I went Esa too far. I think it was right at the beginning of their conversation. Perdón. Bueno. Raquel, habla Luis. Hola, Luis. ¿Cómo estás? Bien. Espero que no te haya olvidado. Oh, espero que no te haya. Ah, espero que no te hayas olvidado. I hope that you have not forgotten. And this one you might have missed because it's got that funny ayas thing. It is a perfect tense in a subjunctive. So that one's a tricky one. But we've got the espero que. Espero que no te hayas olvidado. I hope that you haven't forgotten. And instead of taking olvidar, uh, he's got olvidado, he's got that as a past participle, and he just conjugated the haber part into the subjunctive. And haber goes into that, you know, haya and hayas and uh, hayamos. So that is a subjunctive again, because I hope that you haven't forgotten, and he's hoping that she hasn't done this. So it's, yeah, subjunctive again. Um, Vale, magnífico. ¿Dónde están? ¿Dónde están? Oh, tienen un, un recorrido. They've got a tour uh, del Museo Nacional de Antropología. Muy, muy, un museo muy famoso. Es un museo muy famoso en la Ciudad de México. Y tiene cosas uh, de antropología, claro, sí. De las antiguas culturas uh, de, de los mayas, de los aztecas en México, antes de la era de, de los españoles, de los conquistadores. So we basically get, uh, you know, some tour things in through here, right? Sí, Tenochtitlan, and they talk a lot. It's more cultural thing. Oh, Chacmol! Chacmol! Those of you who remember, if you were with us in the session where they talked about there's Chuck Moll. Oh, remember that that funky little thing where we introduced past tense with you? And we had a little novella, mm -hmm, little novella mm -hmm. about the rain. And oh boy, was it weird. It was funky, surrealistic, weird stuff going on, right? That mysterious creature that, yeah, that's it. There it is. Chuck Moll. Uh, there are many Chuck Molls. There are many, many of these figures. This is not the only one. If you go to Chichen Itza, they have an original there as well. But this uh, uh, god of rain, El Dios de la Lluvia, you know, this, there, there were many, many figures of him everywhere. So they've got this one in the big museum. So that's a nice shout out to something that you read a story about later. Um, uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Tenemos aquí, hmm, oh, this probably, um, again, went under the radar because it wasn't from the weirdo set of triggers. He's trying to sign, find a solution to his marital problems, right? Pobre, pobre Juan. Quizás patillo. Oh, quizás patillo. So he starts with quizás, so here's always a little, maybe a red flag, maybe. Quizás Patty y yo necesitamos pasar unas vacaciones juntos. Maybe Patty and I need to take a vacation together. But it's what comes after that becomes subjunctive. Necesitamos mm. pasar unas vacaciones juntos. Después de que papá... Después de que papá se mejore. After mm. dad gets... Better. Better. Mejorarse is to improve, to get better. Usually it's in your either mental attitude or your physical health, usually your physical health. Después de que papá se mejore, he's saying after dad, it's better. And like cuando calls for subjunctive when something hasn't happened yet, this después, even though it's saying after this hasn't happened yet. This dad getting better? That's not part of the real story at this stage of the game. So it's después de que papá se mejore. After dad gets better, because 
that's not part of the scene yet. Okay. Um, I, I have a question on the sentence before this one. What the word Joe was doing in that, that sentence before this one. Oh, Patty Joe? He says, there. right here? Yo. Patty and Joe. Oh, Patty and I. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Patty and I. Maybe Patty and I need to have a okay. vacation together. Take Thank a you. vacation together. Emma. Okay. Vale. Y entonces después de esto, ah, ah, lo, oh, sí. Uh, la discusión bastante fuerte. We have kind of a, like a mini argument going on. It's kind of strong, right? He keeps asking if she's unplugged everything. Desenchufaste, sí. Um, uh, and, but we, we do have a little subjunctive sneak in. We're going to lose, uh, miss the plane. Oh, uh, got, we got three whole hours till the plane leaves. Did you, did you unplug the iron? How many of you had a mom who did this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't tell you the number of times we would drive back to the house. Did we unplug? Oh my God. Did we lock the door? <laughs> did we unplug the iron? Did I turn off the stove? Oh my God. Uh, no me ponga. Oh, here it's a command. Don't make me nervous. No me pongas nerviosa. Siempre la desenchufo. Oh, is she talking about the future or her habit? Siempre la desenchufo. And the Siempre. la is talking about la plancha. Siempre la desenchufo en cuanto, as soon as. En cuanto, as soon as. En cuanto termino de planchar. Oh, oh, she unplugs it. Is she talking about the future or a habit? A habit. A habit. A habit. So because she's talking about a habit, I always do this. It's not subjunctive. But if she were to say, I will unplug it as soon as, mm -hmm. then the en cuanto would go into a subjunctive. But here she's talking about a habit, so we don't have a need for it yet. Okay. Um, but I have a question because she says to him, Mira, blah, 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 go do this. And shouldn't that be a command? Shouldn't it be? It is a command. Mira? But she it says, is Mira. A command because they're married. Oh, it's a two command. Okay. All right. The okay, two now, commands, the two okay. commands sound like okay. the two verb without the S at the end. Okay. Unless they're an irregular. So yeah, mira is to your near and dear because you talk to them using- Because you. yeah, you just, yeah, yeah, all right. But if you were saying that to somebody else, it would be mire. If it were somebody talking to you in a store, it would be mire, look, look at this. Ah, mire, look at this, because you're showing them something. Okay. Or mire, look at that, right? Because you're showing them something. I get uh, so used to the one form that I, Forget but see that, that that's where in a way formal, in, a, you know, in, in an odd way commands are much more complex than subjunctive in an odd way and that odd way is that tu gets one kind of command if it's a go do it command but it gets the opposite vowel switch with a negative tu command so usted commands are very consistent they're the same if there are go do it they're the same if it's a don't do it, but tu splits off and the verb does one thing if it's a tu command of go do it, and that it does the opposite thing if it's a don't do it. But just with tu, that doesn't happen with usted. It doesn't happen with nosotros. It does not happen with a let's nosotros thing. So commands in an odd way are kind of, funkier, harder to get used to than everything else. Uh, we're going to have a little subjunctive coming up really, really, really soon. Oh, hablan de los Juegos Olímpicos. They're talking about the, oh, they're looking at the Olympic Stadium, el estadio. Ojalá, here it comes, ding, 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 ding. Ojalá, you must use subjunctive. Ojalá algún día, hopefully someday. Ah, tener lugar is to take place. 
Ojalá que algún día los Juegos Olímpicos tengan lugar en San Juan. Ojalá que, you've got to use subjunctive, there's no if, and, or, but about it. Ojalá is a trigger, it requires subjunctive. That they take place, tengan lugar. Hopefully they will take place. She's wishing for something, right? Sí. Ah, bien, 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 bien. ¿Qué más? Y hablan de los deportes, deportes, deportes. Uh, muy, uh, una discusión muy incómoda, right? We got a really uncomfortable uh, discussion here, right? He kind of springs the, the fun trip. Además, no creo estar en forma. ¿Y el esquí acuático? No me dirás que ya no te gusta esquiar en el agua. Oye, ¿por qué este repentino? Why this sudden interest por mis actividades about my aquatic activities? ¿Por qué? Te tengo una sorpresa. Oh, this has nothing to do with subjunctive, but it's kind of a fun use of te. Te tengo una sorpresa. The te is, I have a surprise for... The te is for you. Te tengo. I have for you. Te tengo una sorpresa. So that is kind of fun because it's a fun use of te. Te tengo una sorpresa. Bien. Um, no crees que es mejor consultar a las personas. Don't you think it's better to consult people before you go making reservations? She really shot him down on that one. Wow. Okay. Uh, Palacio de Bellas Artes. They go a little bit more into the whole uh, muralismo thing right here. El movimiento muralista mexicano. Uh, a ver. Uh, oh, where is our little, uh, we have a little nod to subjunctive. Uh, but we've got to get Angela into the picture to get that. Como Rivera y Siqueiros. Orozco pintaba en sus murales imágenes. You know, a lot of these guys were very, very strong, either socialists and or communists, and had really, really strong ideas that came out in their art of the masses of people being very poor and subjugated by the few. It's just a theme that they, they always have in, in their artwork. Aunque muchos de sus murales representan también temas universales. Hmm, está? I'm looking for my little subjunctive thing. And you would kind of miss it because... Uh, actually, I think I may just give you this one because, again, it's like kind of a past subjunctive. She ta uh, Angela comments about... Um, she's talking about her dad when they look at all the art. Uh, Le hubiera gustado. He would have liked it. And that is one you're not going to be able to use yet, but... It's a past subjunctive. Um, so they continue with a few of those, which are a little bit more, more obtuse because there's some past ones that are a little bit tougher to figure out. So I'll give you the next episode to, uh, oop, to check out for next week, la semana que viene. Uh, we'll give that to you for the upcoming week. Did you have any other little questions about something you heard in that, some use of vocabulary that didn't make sense? Anything kind of floating in there? No? no. no? Okay. Las acciones son bastante obvias. Yeah, they're kind of uh, obvious examples uh, with these. Okay. Uh, we're going to dive into some subjunctive here that you guys can actually use, some subjunctive that you can actually use. So we'll start with a whiteboard and then we'll move on to some practice. And uh, when we have this whole thing of weirdo, weirdo just means uh, the kinds, ooh, not kids, <laughs> uh, the kinds of verbs or we might say actions uh, that will trigger or call for subjunctive uh, after that word que. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, so when we talk about weirdo, the weirdo verbs themselves are in plain old present tense. They're not subjunctive, but they're going to set it up. They're going to set it up so that subjunctive comes later. We looked at the W, the wishes and wants, quite a lot, talking about desire for one person that, okay, somebody else does something. But this letter I stands for impersonal expressions. And per impersonal expressions is just a fancy way of saying these all start with the word S. And why are they impersonal? Because when I say it's important, it's necessary, it's good, it's bad, they all start with it's. Well, there's the word it's, es. Uh, it's es plus some kind of an adjective. And as soon as we give you a list, there could be 50 other ones that we haven't told you that. It's going to be es plus an adjective. So the only thing you have to really be careful about is that that adjective is not something like cierto. And it cannot be, ooh, and, and, uh, let me put in the not. As long as it's not something like cierto, or it's not something like verdad, or it's not something like obvio. Because cierto, verdad, obvio all talk about reality. True, true, obvious. <laughs> okay, so it can be any description, but it cannot be as cierto, it cannot be as verdad, it cannot be obvio, because those three will not use subjunctive because they talk about what really is real. Okay, so uh, what are some examples? Uh, and notice these all have to have a K. They must have a K. Es malo que, es bueno que. Good and bad is a value judgment. It's not reality, it's a value judgment. I think it's good, you may think it's garbage. It's a value judgment, okay? Es bueno que, es malo que. Um, es importante que, es, uh, es Raro, okay, it's weird that weird is still a judgment. Weird, ooh, definitely puts you in the speaker's mind. They're evaluating something, they're judging, okay. Uh, es posible, que okay? es imposible, que okay? <laughs> uh, es necesario. Okay, I want you to notice that all of those have K, 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 K. Okay, and now I'm going to show you two examples. I'm going to show you why it was necessary for me to point out that K is a big deal. What do we need with subjunctive? We need a trigger. In this case, it's going to be an impersonal expression. We need that word K. We need another human being. So here's subjunctive. Es malo que comas um, tanto azúcar. Es malo que comas tanto azúcar. Es malo que tú, I don't say the word tú, but comas tanto azúcar. I need subjunctive there because I'm making a value judgment. But I want you to notice something. I can also say, es malo comer tanto azúcar. And now there's no subjunctive. What, uh, oh, why not? Both of those are valid statements. Both of those are said every day. Both of them are correct. Why does es malo get subjunctive in the first one, but es malo does not get subjunctive in the mm -hmm. second one? Can you pick that apart? 
We got some because of the missing. word K. Okay. That's the only because difference. Because of the word K. Because and there's another, another person. Implied. We're not naming a person in the bad second one. So much sugar. So in the second one, we're saying it's bad to eat. And that means anybody. It's bad that anybody does this. It's bad to eat. If I don't have that word K, it's going to bump out the need for subjunctive. And both of those sentences are valid and common and used all the time, but one uses subjunctive and one does not. And the big, big, big difference is this word K. All right. We need to really have that word K to use subjunctive. Uh, we've got to have that. Okay. Um, so I just want you to keep that in mind. You can't leave out the word que when you use these. Okay. Bien. Um, is there any question about that as we start out? Si o no? I have a question about mm -hmm. that is impossible one. It seems like then that would be a certainty. You're saying it's impossible. No. Actually, impossible just makes it more subjunctive. Because if it's impossible, it's part of non-reality. Okay. If it's possible, it might happen, might not. I don't know. Is it 50-50? Is it 60-40? Nobody really knows. But it's impossible means it can't happen at all. And it can't happen at all. Boy, if you can't use subjunctive with that, then you can't use it ever. <laughs> Imposible is a dead sure, nailed it on the head. Boy, yeah. Es imposible. Okay, un ejemplo. Es imposible. Eh, uh, somebody says in, exa in exaggeration, out of frustration. Están, están frustrados. Es imposible que entendamos el subjuntivo. Es imposible que entendamos el subjuntivo. It's impossible that we understand this stuff. <laughs> es, es imposible. Uh, es imposible. Es imposible que, uh, uh, que llueva, eh, que llueva en junio. It's impossible that it rains in June. Oh, that's before monsoon season. Es imposible que llueva en junio. ¿Ok? ¿Bien? ¿Ok? ¿Otra pregunta? ¿Sí o no? ¿No? Nada. Ah, ok. We're going to practice just these. Uh, I think I have one last screen that has some example. Uy, no. ¿Dónde está? No es, perdón, perdón. Voy a buscar un momentito. I just want to give you some examples that you can use. So now you don't have to work. You don't have to work hard at all with uh, me giving you an actual prompt for these because the fact is you're not conjugating some weird hard to conjugate verb. You're using S every single time. Always S. Okay. Never something else. I'm looking for a, a simple list that will be easy. I don't want to wade through the weeds. Too many of these are asking for wading through the weeds. Perdón. I thought I had this saved, so my bad that I did not save this, guys. Um, let me stop. Oh, well, let's take a look at just some examples of things you may use. Like es preciso, which is the same thing as es necesario. It's just a different way to say necesario. Es preciso que... Es urgente, que okay? It may be urgent, but it ain't happening. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, it's urgent that I get a million bucks, too. Okay. 
es importante que es interesante que it's interesting that es interesante que es interesante que usemos Zoom tanto. It's interesting that we use Zoom so much. Uh, es malo, okay? So, you know, all those things, but cierto will not be one of those. Cierto will not be one of them. So just stay away from uh, cierto. Uh, I, I am for homework going to give you um, some some uh, a practice session and a uh, thing that is online and it tells you whether or not you have it right. And um, also a list of some verbs. So uh, you can have also things like, you know, es importante, es sorprendente. It's surprising. You know, anything that starts with es and a description, it's like almost anything almost anything, but it can't be cierto, and it can't be verdad, because those are true. So stay away from truth. Marilyn, so oops, sorry. Go, no, no. In, in a moment, in a moment, could you go back and put the two sentences you gave us, es malo que comas tanto azúcar? Exacto, si, sí. yes I can. Could you put that up and then put es malo comer tanto acusar? Si, si, and si. then the two definitions so I can see specifically where one is and one is not. Okay. Disjunctive. I know the K, I understand. Right. But the definition and, and is- the, the definition, the translation is very, very slight difference. They really right. talk and about that's, the same big idea. That's They're what I need help with. Expressing yeah. it in a different way. So okay. let's take a look at some of these examples. Es importante que estemos en la misma página. It's important that we be on the same page. It's important. Okay. That doesn't say it's true. It's important. We might not be on the same page. Es sorprendente que nadie haya ido a la cárcel. It's surprising that no one has gone to jail. That one's hard because you got the ayah there. Uh, no es bueno que el hombre esté solo. It's not good for the man to be alone. Es posible que algunos sitios web no se muestren o funcionen correctamente en ese navegador. Well, that's a little kind of long. Long in the tooth, <laughs> but it's possible that some websites don't display or function. Here's a nice, easy one. Es necesario que cierren las escuelas. It's necessary for them to close the schools. Es prohibido que la familia anfitriona al, a, aloje a otros estudiantes. That one's harder for you to do. Ah, here's an, an, an easy one to figure out. Es interesante que le, el equipo gane. It's interesting that the team is winning. Wow, they really stink. Oh, it's very <laughs> interesting that they're ahead. What que pasó? What happened here? Interesante is just a value statement. It's just a description. Es with any old description. Es natural que yo esté enamorado de ti. It's natural that I am. Natural doesn't say true. It just says it's natural. Uh, and then they give you some past and future things, which we're not going to wade into. So we're going to look back at that example. So you can see again what we used or what I used. And here we go. And I neglected to actually write the definition of those two above there. Es malo que comas tanto azúcar means... It's bad that you eat so much sugar. Mm -hmm. And then the last second example, es malo comer tanto azúcar just means it's bad to eat so much sugar. That's all. Do they convey the same idea? Yeah, really, pretty much. But the you one with subjunctive makes it personal and up close. Okay. So, okay. Thank you so much. So, you know, I could have just as easily said, 
with that one. Instead of saying, es malo que comas tanto azúcar, I could have changed it to, I could have still made it personal, but in a different way. Uh, es malo que los niños coman mm -hmm. tanto azúcar. Es malo que ustedes coman tanto azúcar. Es malo que los estadounidenses, U.S. people, coman tanto azúcar. Es malo que comamos tanto azúcar. It's bad that we eat so much. The, the que and a human being makes it personal and up and close. It makes it into a specific human being. And that's why that goes into subjunctive. It's bad to eat is like the most impersonal of anything. We don't name any human being there. Right. Okay. Thank you. Do you see the difference there? I do. Thank you so much. Magnifico. Okay. Uh, what I want you to do is to take some time to go off into little groups. And I want you to use any, anything. I have not put out a prompt because it's pretty easy to come up with a, a, an impersonal expression, es, and an adjective, es bueno, es malo, es interesante, es estúpido, es, fan, <laughs> es fantástico, es imposible, es posible, es difícil, anything that's not verdad and not cierto, you can go wild with it and talk about what other people do. Entienden? Understand? See, I'm thinking you need at least seven minutes. I want you to come up with cinco ejemplos, five examples amongst yourselves. And then we'll come back and compare some notes and see if you've used these. And we'll see if we can turn some of your idea, ideas into not subjunctive too so that you know two ways to say the same idea. But one using a kind of, wow, you look really sophisticated when you're using subjunctive versus uh, an easy schmeasy, yeah? Uh, easy peasy. <laughs> there you go. A ver, uh, siete minutos, me imagino. I think you need at least seven minutes for these. Let's check it out. Uh, alguna pregunta, any question before I send you off into groups, si sí or no? No, nada. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me create some groups here. I think we've got uh, okay groups set up. Uh, I'll give you a good seven minutes and then we'll come back, compare some notes, see what examples you brought up. So jot down some little notes, okay? They don't have to be the great wisdom of the world <laughs> because when we, I don't know about you, but most of my conversations are not the great wisdom of the world. But to say that it's bad, that that yokel is driving that way, that's the way we talk, right? Okay. Vale. Que practiquen. Get out there and practice. We'll come back.
Muy bien. Aquí vienen, aquí vienen más. Here comes, oh, at least we've got two of you. Susana, you're always prompt out of the starting blocks. I like that. Me gusta. <laughs> Do you want us to start with our examples or wait? No, we'll wait till everybody comes in. Okay. They'll be in in the next, uh, oh, what, 30 seconds? 10 seconds. Oh, 10 segundos. Casi, casi ningún tiempo. No, nah, hardly any time at all. Okay. Vamos a empezar muy pronto, pronto, pronto. Vamos a empezar. Uh, but, Susana, I am going to have you lead off, and you'll probably want to take yourselves off of mute as when it throws you back in here from breakout, it puts you on mute automatically. So, uh, Susana, I would like to share what she's got for us here first. Primero. Um, es imposible que los cerdos vuelen. Ah, en bola, yeah, es imposible, es imposible que los cerdos, yeah, vuelen. Oh, no. <laughs> me gusta, me gusta muchísimo. Y bueno, otro. Um, es posible que haya cometido un error. <laughs> Sí, possible that it made an error. Me gusta, haya cometido, muy avanzado, me gusta mucho, ok. Uh, es bueno que los niños respeten a sus padres. Ah, es bueno que los niños respeten a sus padres. It's good that kids respect their parents. <laughs> ah, sí, ok, a ver. If that's not subjunctive, I don't know what is. <laughs> you don't know if it'll happen. Yeah. That's more than pigs fly, I tell you. <laughs> okay, this one, I, it, you know, this may be where I make the mistake. Es probable, probable que haya una escasez de agua si la sequía <gasps> uh, continua. Ah, sí, 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 sí. Que haya, and you know, haya, it just means there might be, right? Or there may be. Una escasez de agua, a scarcity of water. Mm. Perfecto, muy bien, muy bien, muy bien. Okay, otros o no? No, no. no. Okay, quien quiere compartir? Who wants to share something else? I, I have a, a, a question first sí. of when I was trying to uh, work out a, a sentence. I wanted to say it's good that you take your mother to church every Sunday. Ah, so yeah, I said, bad. I've been okay. And this is where I'm getting all confused. La leves a tu madre a la uh, iglesia todos los domingos. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to, I, I couldn't figure out Skip the, the la. All you got to do is take out the la. Just, okay, mm -hmm. you're naming who you're taking. So you can't say take her, take. I, that you take her. Okay, but you're really naming mom. Right. So, que Just take lleves, lleves a, a, tu mama. a tu madre. Or, so, but do you need the a part in there, correct? Yes. Because you're because it's a verb. Mama is receiving the action of being taken. Of okay someplace right. driven someplace in this case probably right. sí. exactly okay, muy bien you. muy right. bien okay otros ejemplos otros we had a question problem that we weren't sure if it be subjunctive what if you want to talk about an object i was trying to say es importante que el elvian llegue a tiempo is that okay? Sí, avión. Right. An it's not a human being, but it's a thing. It's okay, a subject. That's so okay, that's what we were unsure of. Okay. Que eh, es importante que el avión llegue a tiempo. It's important that it arrives on time. Perfecto. Perfecto. Muy bien. <laughs> ¿Qué más? Otros? Other examples. Uh, Anybody uh, pop in? Sí, Catalina. Sí. Uh, Es necesario que yo duerma ocho horas. Ah, oh, sí. Es necesario que duerma, que yo duerma ocho horas. Que yo duermo ocho horas. Bien, me gusta muchísimo. Perfecto, perfecto. Ok, ¿qué más? Es 
necesario que visitemos un doctor cuando tenemos una infección bacterial. Vale, muy bien. Sí, me gusta mucho, me gusta mucho. Perfecto. Bueno, más, more. Es bueno que los estudiantes usen mascarillas durante la pandemia. Ah, sí, qué perfecto. Es bueno pandemia, que los... pandemia, 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 que usen mascarillas. When all those different words from mascarillas, tapa bocas, <laughs> cubre, yeah, cubre boca. Wow, they, you know, depending on which place you're in, they're inventing all kinds of new words for mascarillas. Okay, bueno, qué más. Es bueno que mi hermano sepa mucho sobre carros. Ah, that's good that he knows a lot about cars. Excelente. Bueno, Federico, ¿tienes algo? Sí. Es imposible que, Mar que Marilyn me dé tarea fácil. Ah, <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Tristemente, tristemente, oh, sí. tristemente, yeah. sí. Uh, soy, soy una desgraciada. I'm an, I'm an, uh, yeah, I'm a bad one. Okay. Bueno, hay más ejemplos. Hay más uh, ejemplos. Es probable que Raquel esté enojada con su madre. Uh, sí, es probable que Raquel de destinos esté enojada con su mamá. Uf, sí, 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 me imagino que sí. Bueno, y más, y más. Um, es probable que yo tenga una vacuna de nuevo. Ah, sí. Okay. Excelente, muy bien. Ustedes hicieron, hicieron muy, muy, muy bien. You guys did really, really well with this. Uh, really. I, Casi perfecto, really, almost perfect job on all of these. ¿Hay más ejemplos o no? No? ¿Sí? no. Ok. Uh, fantástico. Uh, me gusta mucho que ustedes practiquen con precisión. I like it that you guys practice. And I like it that you guys practice this subjunctive. So, okay. Next week, we are not going to really wade off into new waters. We're still going to work with these. You'll get some prompts to help you. Um, some of them, if I can find good examples, may be visual, but that depends on if I find good visual examples. You'll have prompts to work off of. A very small category will be translation, because the only thing that will be kind of new, but not too scary, is to use just K and a subjunctive. So that'll be the one very tiny segment that will be really new. Um, it'll be, um, I'll have some small translations and I'll tell you which infinitive I want you to use, but not how to use it. But these are gonna be things that people say all the time. And it's, it's like that last thing you say as you leave a place or you leave somebody. Okay, yeah. so they're going to be things like, come back soon. They're going to be things like, have a good time. Okay. Have a good time. They're going to be your last thing you say when you leave a place or leave somebody. And they're all going to use subjunctive. But they're, they're going to leave off the weirdo verb. They're going to start with K. They're going to start with K. So they're that part. And I believe Paula did a whole little segment on that. Did she not? Uh, where she used K? If she didn't, I'll find another example of people who do that. So you're going to have one little section with that and other things where I will ask you to interpret or give ideas using either those verbs of wishing or wanting and the impersonal phrases, because I want you to be completely comfortable just with that. Those are the easiest ones to use. So I will give you that. I will give you the new episode of Destinos, 
So that'll be just fun for watching, but do kind of do make a mental note. Hmm, are they using subjunctive here, right? And the very last thing I'm going to give you is gonna be a fun self practice thing. Uh, and it's very grammatically oriented, but it, it's fun for a couple of reasons. I'll show you what it looks like. This is like the gift from the gods. This is a little website that asks you, <laughs> Hola amigos, how's the subjunctive going? And you will sadly to yourself, because I'm not there, say, <laughs> yeah, it's going. Okay. But really, this is good. She gives us teeny tiny mini lesson. And after she's done with the mini lesson, she goes, are you ready? And you'll hit C. And uh, you'll the hear letter a little bit. I in and she's going to give you more examples. Good news. There are only three groups and of stem changes. Each time they're going to give you like how about things looking to click at on. some examples of these stem changing verbs for group one. So it's muy probable que hoy tiempo con mi amiga Ana y con su perrita Moca. Here's part. Here's a part that's going to get fun because they'll give you little cool. snippets of conversations, and you'll choose one verb or the other. All these examples will use the impersonal phrase stuff. If you get something wrong at the end it will come back and say, here's what you got wrong. Let's see if you can revisit this and do it again, but get it right the next time. That's cool. That is it's cool. It's very cool. It's got little lessons and then it's got an actual situation of what people might really say. And you're going to see them doing this activity. Mm. So it puts it in context. Yes. And, and they're not like real, real hoity-toity, highbrow stuff. There are things that you talk about when you're out and about in town with your friends, walking the dog, going to the store, doing all that normal kind of activity. So there's no real highfalutin stuff going on. It's just normal, everyday activity. And whatever you get wrong at the end, it will tell you, let's revisit this and see if you can get it right the next time. So do go through the whole thing. I'll give you the, I'll give you the link. It's a really super easy link. And you know, just like run the video, run the little lessons, and then go into these videos where they give you the, the contextual juice. You will have, I think, a lot of fun with it because you get feedback immediately about whether or not you got it right. I like that. Yeah? Okay. And sometimes they will give you two choices based on subjunctive or not. Sometimes they give, will give you two choices based on, ooh, should it be a yo or a nosotros form? So kind of be aware of that. Uh, but very, very practical examples. Ejemplos muy prácticos. Bien? Okay, vale? Alguna pregunta antes de terminar la grabación? Any kind of question before we cut off our recording? Mm -hmm. Did most of this make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I sense that a lot of you had some really excellent examples. Mm -hmm. and, I have and, a question. Sí, sí, dime. The next semester starts in September. Do we continue? Or do we take a break at the end of August? They do give a break at the end of August. I think they assume that some people take off to do family stuff. It kind of runs into the um, Labor Day weekend thing. Oh. Um, but yeah, they always have a longer break between end of summer and beginning of this. Although this kind of seems a little bit longer to me than usual. Uh, when is the first starting date? September 13th? I think. Um, Seems like a week longer than what we need. For us yeah, but, but on the other hand, we're going all the way through August instead of finishing in the middle of August. That's so, true. Are That's we? True. That's what I wanted to know. We're on August 18th. That's true. Yeah, we're going right up till, you know, pretty, pretty close to the end. So, because we still have next week. And um, last September month. 15th, yeah. I think we start here. Okay. Three. That's yeah, it's I like the second thinking. week of September. So the, the first you know, I think they assume that some people have kids going back to school, that schedules are a little busy at this time of year, just for family type reasons. Ready, but they don't so there will be two weeks without a class. 
And you don't um, just do this for fun. <laughs> I think I think it uh, it's, it's two. I think it's bordering on three weeks. It's three. It three. Yeah. I will have. Eight, yeah. Um, eight our last week. Next week. Right. And we'll talk a little bit about like maybe things you can do in the interim hiatus <laughs> time um, there's a very fun movie that you can probably choose to watch Ooh, and it's very fun because it's very very sci-fi kind of fun but not like outer space sci-fi it's, it's fun sci-fi okay so we'll have some suggestions for things that you can do um okay bueno está bien are we good to go gracias Magnifico. So we'll continue on this vein, but you'll have some really specific prompts. Y nos vemos, nos vemos el miércoles. I will see you guys on Wednesday. Thanks. And if you wish to Thanks. hang on and chat a bit, you can do that.